What is the recipe to make sure people listen to it from the beginning to the end? It's like making a Big Mac. You know, there's so many sesame seeds on that top bun. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it ain't a Big Mac bun. You know what <laughs> no. I'm saying? Hey, welcome back to the Fred Minnick Show, brought to you by the Beeline in northern Kentucky, Cincinnati area. Go to visit your sipping point.com. Listen, folks, I am joined by the legendary, iconic, one of the greatest rockers of all time, clown from Slipknot. Wow, what a great pleasure to see you again, my friend. Thanks for uh, having me as usual, and you're too kind. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, and, and when we, I met you, um, I first interviewed you a year ago when you came out with this, when you came out, work, started working with Cedar Ridge to come out with this whiskey, and then we were on stage together at Louder Than Life, but you just shared with me a story uh, about why, when and when and where and how you choose to wear the mask when it comes to like, you know, business functions versus like the stage presence. Tell, tell us about that. Well, you know, it's kind of funny. I, I always uh, joke with my peers and fans and, you know, family that I have artistic schizophrenia. So it's like this third person world that I've created for myself has become more of a problem than it has uh, fruitful for artistic purposes. Um, you can imagine in 25 years of service, people are like, do I call you Clown? Do I call you Sean? My real name's Michael, Michael Sean Cran. So, uh, you know, do I call you Sean? Do I call you Michael? Do I call you Clown? AKA number six, custom percussionist. So in the early days when we were dealing with how do we introduce myself? So on the back of a CD, it would say art direction, M. Sean Cran. But above that, it would say, number six, custom percussionist, clown. And, um, you know, that becomes confusing for everyone. So I, I made a decision that it's nice for me to be the one to try and separate mm -hmm. uh, the two entities. And what's ironic is both creatures do both things. Both creatures do the art, both creatures do the business. But it's mainly the universe that can't separate it. So I have to separate it. And um, I think it comes down, something like this is more personal. Mm -hmm. And I want to make it more personal to who I am as a human. And, you know, I, I, I often feel like my culture needs to be more around us to let that other beast be around and less confusing. So I, it's more or less... A decision made around uh, the situation. Whether okay. It's very personal, which I feel this is. Mm -hmm. So I want to make it more personal. I feel like mm -hmm. everyone wants the clown, you know, and I don't feel like much in life anymore. Most people want Michael Sean, you know, so it's good to push the, the Michael in front of people, if that makes sense. In your career, have you ever let anyone else wear the mask? How do you mean? Like, have you like uh, like been to like a charity or something and let someone else? You know, it's actually a really good question. Um, never let anyone like wear the mask. You know, I've given masks away so mm -hmm. they can do whatever they want, but I've I've never had anyone take my mask and wear it like on stage or in a you know. Uh, there's there's a, a few very obscure things, mm -hmm. but they're not like you can wear this. You know, usually I'm generally interested that if I have a mask laying here and if we're friends, <coughs> pardon me, you would you would come in and I would be very interested whether you would just pick it up and blindly, maybe disrespectfully. I, I don't really look at it that way, but what what are you going to do blindly? You know, if that's laying here, are you going to pick it up? Are you going to attempt to put it on? Are mm -hmm. you scared of it? Are you, is it fragile to you? Um, so that's generally how I roll. But, you know, out of 25 years, everyone's really respectful. And the only ones that just grab it and put it on are my kids. <laughs> they just, they don't care, you know. And I, I actually have a couple close friends that just, that are really close to me, kind of picked it up, tried it on. But I'm I'm pretty brutal, like. You know, you can imagine 
you can escape in a mass, so you can imagine all these jackasses around the world that might have had our masks around for a moment mm-hmm. that can play funny games. Yeah. You, know, you, you hire some mask maker, he makes the final thing, he's had a couple drinks, this guy's girlfriend, who knows what's going on. Mm-hmm. You know, so I've always made the mask, look, this is, this is like a wedding ring. You, know, this, you gotta respect this, you can't just pick it up and touch it this is my livelihood this is also my art and i mainly tell people like if you attempt to put that on you got to be prepared for what it's going to make you for the rest of your life oh wow it could curse you it could spin you down a direction that you don't want to be it's real that's real that's blood sweat and tears there's Mm -hmm. there's many years of leaving family and missed birthdays and you know all that stuff that you know, whatever that the world pounds on you. So that, that represents my blood, sweat and tears. So it's not something I really offer. And I don't know if anybody wants that curse anyway, to be the clown. Yeah. Now I have, well, I, I find it interesting about, um, the, the hard rock genre and, and wearing mask, because there's a lot of them who will be in the game for maybe, I don't know, five, six years and they want to change. They don't want to wear the mask anymore. It, and it seems to me like um, they don't have that same kind of level of respect and appreciation for like what that mask does for them on stage as you do. Well, you know, there's a, I can't speak for anyone. I, I, I can tell you that in the reality of my world, I never put it on with any other idea that I was going to do it to be able to tell the truth. My therapist tells me I only tell the truth when I'm wearing the thing. And, but that's obvious to me uh, because that's my dream and my life and I'm going to express the most realities behind my being through the presentation of my art. Um, I, I know that for me, because of how hard we go and how hard we've always gone, there's a secret in there that most people will never understand. We, we're gluttonies for our own punishment. Mm -hmm. And we don't purposely indulge in pain. We don't Mm -hmm. bring it, but it's a very painful sport, Slipknot. Yeah. And I know that when I walk off a stage and I go into a room to take that off, when I take that off and I look at myself, I know that I have lived. Now that I'm not on the road and I'm not doing much, I may sleep till three in the afternoon and not do a damn thing all day. And I don't know if at the end of the night I'm going to say I've lived. Here... In the Slipknot world, there, there's no hope but to not live. You know what I mean? You put that on, you go through what you're going through. At the end of the night, I'm like, my purpose in life is, is holy. You yeah. know, it's this thing, this, this creation we've created for ourselves allows me to live. I, I, f- I have to be physical. I have to be mental. I have to be spiritual. Um, some aspects I have to be, I have to have a monetary aspect in my brain, which I don't like, but it could be a part of the situation. Um, so the only thing I could think about is that maybe, maybe it doesn't mean as much to people. You know, I mean, there's not a day that doesn't go by that every member wishes we didn't have to wear that stuff. Um, especially since it was my idea in the sense of like, I brought it to the table. And for all I know, maybe some of the guys think it's the worst thing ever. They went with it because of our love for each other and our Mm -hmm. dream and our brand. But secretly, some people could be just like, I can't believe I signed up my whole life for this. (laughs) Whereas I'm only doing it with that, you know? So I never forced it on anyone. It seems like it's what we wanted to do and it's it's helped and it, it really is who we are. And so I would never know, people ask me all the time, you know, are you going to take off the mask? And I say, you know, why, why, why do I need to do that? You're only asking me because of behavior. You're only doing that because you have a hypothesis of all the other artists some way or not. But I'm not a part of that, that test, that, 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 you know, field research. I'm the clown in a band called Slipknot. We are not your kind. We are not like you. We're not part of your hypothesis. You can't incorporates in your petri dish of how you things are rolled so for me it's it's pure religion and uh you know it's it's yeah. my it's my life and i i can't ever fathom 
going in so personal because of laziness or stress or just the will to not want to put it on anymore. I mean, I signed a deal with it in the beginning and there's just never been any think of anything else. You know, I just, I really couldn't fathom us any other way. I would feel cheapened. I would feel betrayed. You know, that's, I think that's the difference. Mm -hmm. um, it's the self-worth in the dream, in the art that you're creating. Ours is very, very, very precise. And we do not deter away from staying the course. Well, I, I tell you, it, 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 there are very few things in, in, in music that seem genuine to me today. And The Mask and Slipknot and y'all's performance on stage is one of the most genuine things in all of music. And I, and I, I talk to musicians in all genres, and it's, it's beautiful. Well, I really appreciate that. We, we feel the same way. We feel... It's not that we're in a league of our own, but we're in a, a dream of our own. You know, this is in our subconscious mm -hmm. that we, we bring out. And um, it is surreal and it's not planned. And, and, and there's, there's communication around what we are that I will never be able to put into human words. But it, it, it lends to what you're saying is that there is something very special about us that isn't business that isn't even art and may not even be human. I don't know. But there's a thing that goes on with us that we don't even talk about, we don't say, we don't... I don't even know if some of us know what's going on. I, I, I stay on this stuff is why I, I mm -hmm. think about it all the time. I just I go in and in. But there is something very, very special and very surreal and once in a lifetime sort of thing. I, I, I have a romantic uh, idea that, you know, we are it mm -hmm. in my lifetime. You know, like I grew up on the Beatles. I'm 50. My mom played the Beatles all weekend when I was growing up. And, you know, in my lifetime, you know, I'm going to be the great, I'm going to be in one of the greatest bands of all time in this thing called life. You know, from Mozart to Slipknot, I have a place, and it's only because we are so special. And I there, shit there you not. Before you, before you all came here, I said that Slipknot's like Mozart. I, I seriously said that, and I don't. And I, it, it, what people don't understand is like what you are doing in two hundred years. We are going to consider like classic music. Well, just to take that further, just to take that further, I very. It's probably my art history love of in college learning about art history, but I when when I first told myself I was going to go do a band, I had to admit to myself that I would never reap the rewards, that I would never get the acknowledgement, that that no one would ever understand it, that I would always always have to keep it under my belt and realize that I was gonna be dust before someone was gonna put it all together, go hold the press, mm -hmm. let, let, let's really, really now look at this. And I say this because I don't even have people ask me what the first album cover's about. I don't have people ask me what the second album about, uh, cover's about, or the third, or the fourth. They ask me, so what's the new mask about? Only because I have a new 12 year old who's just getting out of grade school and about ready to go into high school and we're, there, we're the thing. So, you know, what are the new masks? Because we have to write it in on this interview to bring up the, the younger people up to speed. But I never get the reality behind the mask, you know? So I agree with you. We're going to be long gone. And it's funny to watch us because we just... We've been aware of it for so long. We don't really get any happiness. We don't... We, we don't there's never... You know, you won't see a lot of pictures of mm -hmm. our whole band hanging with other bands because other bands are like, fuck you, you know? And, and, and I don't know if we're hated because of what we are or there's a jealousy or a simple hatred because we're jerks. I don't, I don't know, maybe all of it, but we live in our own world and we admitted to ourselves a long time ago we were all going to be gone before the book of the knot was really understood. But you know what? I watch stories about Al Capone. I watch stories about Van Gogh. I mm -hmm. watch, this, this is the way of art. You just have to acknowledge it. And I'm one with it. I, I want to be exhausted and gone 
Do you look at your uh, what you all do as more of art than say hard rock or heavy metal? It's a really good question. It's uh, this is the the question for for the clown. It wasn't until five years after my you know my partner Paul Gray died that I realized he was the one that was wanting the art from me. He is the one who said, "Hey, what you do is different from what." we're going to go do. And if you continue to do that, I will continue to write music that's different. We will all continue to do what we do to make our own thing. And, you know, am I the biggest metal fan in the world? I'm not a big any music genre in the world. Music is my God. I might need jazz tonight on the way home. I might need classical. I might need something. I don't know. Um, But... I'm try- I, I have always only believed it's art because writing music is art, arranging, choosing mm-hmm. a, uh, a key to write the song in, lyrics, prose, you know, conducting, arranging, prose, performing music. So I, I have never approached this band as anything else but art. And I still can't think about it as anything else but art. But... There are other people that I'm sure would sit here and say, no, we are nothing but music. And I, I would agree. I, I don't have a problem with that, but you're asking me. And I honestly have never looked at anything. And I think anyone around me would tell you, I try to make the dressing room art. Yeah. I try to make the buses art. I try to make the way our tour manager picks plane tickets art. I try to live in a world of our imagination and nothing else because it's a lot funner than living this world's behavior you know i want to get out of this world's behavior and live in the imaginary sense so for me it's always been nothing but art and i feel like that's a big reason why it's been allowed to move so liquidly uh through 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 the years instead of just being posted as you know a a hard rock band or a heavy metal band Mm -hmm. you know it's so much more it has so much more spirit, so much more love, so much more pain, so much more religion than just some hard rock band playing the circuit and giving away all our publishing and everything to some label that hides, you know, a bank that hides under the name a label. And, you know, I do what I want. I always have. And what I like to do is art. And that's a very loose, I hate using that word, and I use it a lot. But I use it because it defines what Corey Taylor does. It mm-hmm. defines what Jim Root and Mick do. It defines what I do. And it, and it goes further. Yes, you play guitar, but you also perform. You're running around. You, know, you help to arrange. You help write. It's just one giant focus of art. Well, when I first listened to uh, We Are Not Your Kind, I could not stop listening to the whole album. In fact, I can't listen to a single song without listening to, you know, from beginning to end in much the same way that Pink Floyd The Wall is to me like I have to listen to that whole album when I when I listen to it. When 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 you were writing that um did did you have that in mind or did the did the songs just kind of come come to you and just It's been a journey. Together? It's been a journey. You know, we we did our third album with Rick Rubin and I remember having a conversation with Rick about if you want to do a double album um, you know, I've always had thoughts of doing a double album. There's never been like an official metal double album, you know, but you know, the business of CDs are, is almost done, you know? So it's like, it's a hard business to get into when all I want to do is write songs. So Rick told me in order to do something like that dream, you would have to have 70 plus songs, 70 to 80 minimum to create two discs of the best conceptual ideas together. Um, so I'm always thinking that and I employed the idea of let's write while we're off instead of, you know, Corey going to do Stone Sour and other people going to do things, you know, taking the break, physically getting better, spiritually, mentally, getting away from each other, let, getting bored, getting ready to do Slipknot. I'm like, let's just do Slipknot. And in order to do that, we had to have a lot of acceptance, but we did. All of our family said yes and encouraged it. And then even better from there, we were the, the philosophy is to be able to take time 
and say, what does this song mean? I need a week. You know, I need to fly back home, listen to this song, not be pressured to come up with it right now and just get it out. It's not mm -hmm. happening. So we were able to really spiritually find out what the songs mean to each other and to us and in relation to each other. But more importantly, parts in the song, what are they reminiscent of? Oh, this is very reminiscent of the cars. Why? Because I love music and I can, I can sort of, it's not the cars, but it, it's reminiscent of the cars. I know, let's listen to the cars together. Okay, we're listening to the cars. Wow, they used reverb on this part. Maybe that's what we're missing. Let's do it our way. Let's not reproduce, you know, moving in stereo by the cars, the effects and these things, but let's be inspired by the music we're blessed to have had in our life that is the God to me. And <clears throat> it's boiling in my brains anyway, all these things. It's, it's, it's a matter of having the time to suss it out, to, to, to have the epiphany to go, let's add a reverb here, or let's do gang vocals, or let's go outside and get some car, you know, whatever it is. Um, that was a pure ingredient to this recipe, we are not your kind, is to take the time and acknowledge what everything is. What does this chorus mean? What does it mean spiritually? Mm -hmm. what, what, what is it? What tempo is it? What's it doing? What would Mozart do? You know, would he, would he laugh at it? Would he let it be? Would he take it further? Would he bury the intellectual content so far it's going to take a century to understand? I mean, that's what, where we got to go, and that's what we got to do. There were 22 songs written and 25 intro, outro, segue, interlude mm -hmm. sort of things. <clears throat> and we wound up with what? Uh, 11 songs or something? Can't remember. I think it's 11 songs and three of them are like little arty things. So you, you know, you're really down to fewer songs. But what, what, what we learned is that, you know, quit worrying, quit worrying about getting it done. And, oh, we only have these songs recorded. So let's put it together. This time it was like, we have 25. What is the recipe to make sure people listen to it from the beginning to the end? It's like making a Big Mac. You know, there's so many sesame seeds on that top bun. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it ain't a Big Mac bun. You know what <laughs> no. I'm saying? Right. It's perfect. The yep. granules of salt. We're interested in that. But we're only interested in it because I don't want to be told by the money men and the people for their fast profits and their interest returns, whatever it is their lame life is, I signed up to have albums sold, and I expect them to sell them. That's it. It's do your job and get away from me. What I want to do is I want to blow my brains out in, in a studio with people that are like-minded, and I want to dig in to the subconscious, to the soul, and, 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 and rally those ideas and those temperatures and those colors and have the courage to be able to communicate them and then physically touch them. You know, through through an audio recording, you know, play, boom. There's our brains. So we we stayed the course. We we let things marinate, and and the only way to do that is to go, write, go home, put it away, do family, put it on here and there, listen to it. All of a sudden, I'm getting a McDonald's. Boom! I know, you know, acquire. <clears throat> you can't just get that forcing. You know, the Stones didn't do that. No one does that. No no one does. But the good albums, uh, the ones that are legendary, Gold Bin stuff that you and I still listen to, Pink Floyd, The Wall. I mean, why anybody today on earth isn't trying to make this caliber of music mm -hmm. is insane. And I will tell you, the business is in the way a little bit. It's in a way, especially with the internet. And I recorded 96, you know, 1,000 kilohertz, and they... they, they they cut it right in half, 44, one to put it on a disc. It's already garbage. You know, when we have the ability to stream music in 96 and you can hear it just like I'm hearing it in the studio. Highest resolution. I could sell that. But you think the business people want to do that? No. They want to sell you and I a shitty MP3 with their compression that they don't even tell us. I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on an album. I hand it over to all the usual suspects. They put their own codec on it, their own compression, won't even tell us, put it out. It's a glorified MP3 at best. This is the business I'm in. This is the high, you know, let's go. Let's just, 
Let's slug off the brain, you know? But that's all right. I mooch off of them. I use them to their dying day, all their blood. And most of them are gone. You know, most of them are all gone. They, they go from this label to that label, practicing the same aspects. But I'm still here. And so what we're trying to employ now is being able to give in my birthright to sit and marinate on what I'm creating, not being told what I've created and, or what we've created. It's like we're telling people, we're creating this, we need this, and I'm not quite sure of what this is yet. And it, I don't, can't tell you when it's going to come. But I'm going to work on it. You, you have my promise. I'm not just holding us over the coals. I'm getting up every day looking for the ingredients to this recipe. So it's an honor for you know, me to hear from you that it's one of those albums because we really did work towards this after so many years of having to facilitate a schedule and, and, and a, a quarterly, you know, uh, it's, uh, you know, whatever labels want, need in their quarters. And, oh, man, I just, we want to make art, man. That's all we want to do. Well, that you did, number one album i mean that thing owned the charts for good reason it did and i'll tell you something i usually don't get mad at at like the grammys uh but when i did not see you all the grammys i wanted to fucking throw something across the wall i was very upset about it i could not believe it it was to me that is one of the greatest snubs in um, in the history of that of that organization. It's grandpa, you know, who is that guy? He did what, you know? And it's like they're getting money, and they they're like, why do I have a new car? You know, that's when it's going to get fun for me.